Welcome to Arkansas Wildlife. You know thousands of miles of streams run through the natural state, and on this week's show, we're gonna take a look at a couple of those streams, one of which is pretty popular for floating and smallmouth bass fishing, and the other one, despite its location near the biggest city in the state, is largely unknown to a lot of folks. We're also gonna look at the Arkansas Water Trails Program, brought to you by the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission and some of our partners, making it easier for Arkansans to connect with nature through paddle sports. A little later in the show, we're gonna head over to the Caddo River and do a float trip with a heavy emphasis on smallmouth bass fishing. Look how beautiful that thing is, man. But first up this week, we're gonna head to the Fush Creek Bottoms, less than 10 minutes from the heart of our capital city but a great place to escape the hustle and bustle of city life and get back to nature. All that and this week's winner of a free hunting and fishing license right after this break. Arkansas Wildlife is brought to you in part by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price, every day, Academy. Life in the capital city can be fast and frenzied, but the peace and tranquility of the great outdoors isn't as far as you might think. Although it's largely unknown to many residents of the state's largest city, there's a special place within the city limits of Little Rock that offers a natural retreat from concrete and congestion. The Fush Creek watershed not only drains and filters runoff, it also provides more than 1,800 acres of wetlands that can be used for all sorts of recreational activities. On Fush Creek, you can float, fish, hike, bike, watch wildlife, and escape city life all while still being in the city limits of Little Rock. Most of Little Rock drains into Fush Creek, and Fush Creek and its wetlands provide habitat for wildlife, storage water capacity during flood events, and a great recreational resource for City of Little Rock residents and visitors alike. A huge variety of things that can be done here. I think it's limited to one's imagination and how active you are outdoors. You can come and just take a, a nice leisurely float in a canoe, kayak, flat bottom boat. You can get out and you can walk around. We're starting to develop some trails. Having this come through this huge urban wetlands area, it's gonna be awesome so that people can get out after work and take a hike and, and come and see all kinds of wildlife. We haven't had the opportunities to explore it as much as we'd like because we don't have the physical access. That's soon to change. Fush Creek has about 25% of all the fish species that are found in Arkansas. It has a variety of mussel species. There's over 200 species of birds that live along Fush Creek and in Fush Bottoms. It's a great place to see wildlife that would not be in the city if it wasn't for all the great riparian habitat. There's many miles of Fush Creek that you can float. The most scenic part goes through an area we call Fush Bottoms. And it's a 4.4 mile float between Benny Craig Park and Interstate Park. Although you can do sections of that if you want to. The most scenic part goes from Interstate Park upstream into Fush Bottoms, where you see beautiful old cypress trees, some of them 300 years old. And it's in the heart of the city. It's an amazing place to see wildlife of all different kinds. Because of runoff from the city, one of the issues facing Fush Creek is the ongoing battle with litter that's washed into the creek from Little Rock storm drains. Well, because Fush Creek is an urban waterway, it also gets a lot of pollution, a lot of runoff, from all the city streets and sidewalks. A lot of litter that's from the streets gets washed into the creeks through storm drains. Oil, antifreeze, yard waste all gets washed into the creek when it rains. All the storm drains in the city lead directly to a waterway. A lot of the storm drains in Little Rock lead to Fush Creek and its tributaries. And those that don't go that way go directly towards the Arkansas River. Well, a great way to help Fush Creek is to pick up trash on the streets anywhere you see it. Of course, don't litter in the first place. Litter on the streets gets into our creeks. 
Friends of Fush Creek, Audubon, Arkansas, and a number of other groups have taken on the mission of restoring and revitalizing the area by hosting cleanups and adding more access points to the creek. The Friends of Fush Creek is a collaboration of many organizations that are working together to clean up, restore, and revitalize Fush Creek for the benefit of the environment and a wide variety of public uses. And we are looking for volunteers to join us with our big volunteer cleanups that we do a few times a year. Uh, also looking for volunteers to help us mark storm drains with do not pollute stickers and to adopt a street so we can keep trash from getting in our creeks in the first place. Well, one of the major goals is just to increase the public awareness of this incredible gem that's right here in the heart of the city. When we have our cleanups and people come out here and see it themselves, they're just in awe and said, I can't believe that I've loaded up my canoe or my kayak and I've driven across the state to float somewhere else and I can be coming here. One of the biggest success stories for Friends of Fush Creek has been the Drain Smart program. The Drain Smart program is one of the programs of the Friends of Fush Creek and through that we recruit artists to paint murals on storm drains that have a drains to creek message. It's a way to raise the profile of an otherwise plain metal and concrete structure and make the connection in people's minds between trash on the streets, storm drains, and water quality. Realistically, we're never going to get rid of all the litter that gets into the creek, but we're already making a fantastic visual difference by taking out some of the major trash accumulations and by raising awareness that people should not litter because it affects our creeks. The proper place for trash is a garbage can, not a city sidewalk or street. If you see trash, pick it up. You're not only making your neighborhood cleaner, you're also keeping it out of Fush Creek and making this urban stream even better for outdoor recreation. Arkansas Wildlife is brought to you in part by Arkansas's own PK Grills, maker of the new PK360, the best and last grill you'll ever buy. Arkansas scenic Ozark Highlands are known far and wide as a top destination for canoeing and kayaking. But a new program from the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission is blazing trails that most paddlers would consider uncharted waters. A lot of people do think of the Ozarks and we have a lot of famous places where a lot of people go, but part of the program, the Arkansas Water Trail Program, is introducing people to new places to paddle. And the Delta is an area that has got some magnificent paddling. Working with various partners, the Game and Fish Commission has established the Arkansas Water Trail System. There are established trails that are marked so people can get out with their family, with their friends, and go explore Arkansas's great outdoors. The Crooked Creek Water Trail between Harrison and Yaleville is the only route on a traditional Arkansas float stream. The rest of the trails cover flat water routes in the Delta and Coastal Plains. The neat thing about paddling in the Delta is it's great wildlife viewing, big, huge old cypress trees, tupelo trees, so it's kind of a whole different venue for people to explore some of the neat waterways of Arkansas. Paddling on these slower moving streams has other advantages. You don't need a shuttle always here. You can put in at one access, you can paddle downstream and paddle back up, or paddle upstream and come back to your car. Two water trails slice through the Sheffield Nelson Dagmar Wildlife Management Area near Brinkley. There's the four and a half mile Row Bio Trail and the 15 mile Bio de Vue Trail. Row Bio, with its well defined channel, is a good spot for beginners. Bio de Vue takes paddlers through a dense bottomland forest, including parts of the Arkansas Natural Heritage Commission's Benson Creek Natural Area, as well as the Cache River National Wildlife Refuge and Dagmar WMA. Primitive camping is available on Dagmar and all water trails are marked with reflective blue signs. We ask that you keep an eye on one trail marker till you get to the next one, but it's a really good idea to print out a map from our website, um, to have that map and be familiar with a compass and what would really be great is if you also have a GPS. Um, again, you can get out here on your own without those things, but it is a pretty wild area. These slow meandering bayous carry paddlers back in time 
through some of the last remnants of the vast forests that once dominated the eastern third of Arkansas. The area is part of an ecosystem that has been designated a wetland of international importance. You've got trees in here that have been core sampled to almost a thousand years old, so they were here before Columbus landed. You know, when settlers first arrived in this part of the world, they must have thought this was just this vast wilderness. The bottomland hardwoods in this delta area was 24 million acres. You know, through agriculture and logging of trees, it's now down to segmented maybe 5 million acres. And the big woods here is one of the biggest sections left, minus what's in Louisiana. So that's a treasure for Arkansas, but a national treasure and an international treasure. Myriad species of fish and wildlife call this place home for at least part of the year. This area is known for waterfowl. Um, if you come in the fall and the winter, there are going to be thousands and thousands of, of, of waterfowl coming through this area. And I'm hearing all kinds of things in the background right now. I'm hearing a yellow-billed cuckoo, and I'm hearing frogs, and all kinds of things talking, and lots of migratory songbirds, lots of woodpeckers. The beautiful yellow prothonotary warbler is in this bottomland hardwood area, so lots of wildlife viewing. These trails also serve other purposes. This time of year, may, I may think of this area as my paddling wildlife viewing area, but this is a big waterfowl hunting area, and any of us that like to waterfowl hunt, you're coming in in the dark. So I've talked to a lot of duck hunters out here who love this water trail because these we have uh, blue triangular markers along the trail and they're reflective. So they're really helpful coming in and out. So this trail benefits a lot of different user groups and it helps people access uh, this area, which is a pretty wild area. Anglers can also benefit. A great area to fish, beautiful cypress trees you can jig around, bring your, your crickets, your jigs, your minnows, and you're gonna have a lot of fun here. The Arkansas Water Trail System aims to create new outdoor opportunities and enhance traditional uses of public land. By using existing waterways as trails, Game and Fish has accomplished those goals in a cost-effective way. My job is to get people out viewing wildlife, getting involved in conservation, enjoying the outdoors. And building a traditional trail takes quite a bit of money and it takes quite a bit of staff. And water trails are already built. And for many of our areas, our wildlife management areas, we already have boat launches and parking areas. So all we needed to do was to put in signs, um, information panels at the access points, create a website, and sign the trail. And there you go, you've got a spot for people to get out and enjoy the outdoors that they didn't know about beforehand. More information on all of Arkansas's water trails, including maps and specific information about each, is available at agfc.com. We're headed out today to the Caddo River above the Gray Lake. The stretch we're going to float today is from Caddo Gap down to Glenwood, about a six or seven mile float, and we're targeting smallmouth bass. We had a pretty big group with us, uh, Scotty Wyatt, a videographer and, and producer here on the show. Uh, it's, it's actually Scotty's home river. He uh, deer hunts on a lease that's a little bit farther down on the Caddo, but he spends a lot of time on the river, so very knowledgeable about it. I say you know what the difference is between a lens flare and art. An old friend of ours, Eric Kafka. About $1,000 a day who uh, I've fished with for many years. He's also a videographer, and he was fishing uh, on this trip, but we knew that he would be a good guy that we could hand the camera to uh, if one of, the, one of us got a, a good fish on and, and he'd get some good video for us. Uh, also, Mike Wintro, the still photographer for Game and Fish, because Mike really was looking to get some smallmouth bass underwater shots. And then uh, Brent Stipsky, another Game and Fish employee who works down at the Central Arkansas Nature Center, uh, got a chance to get out in the field because he's usually uh, in there in the nature center. We had a great group of guys. We uh, set out uh, pretty early uh, on a weekday morning. A little bit cool to start things off that day. And also the water was a little higher and a little more stained than you would typically find on the Caddo. And that was a result of some rainfall a little bit earlier in the week. But still, we were pretty confident about our chances of, of catching some smallmouth on this trip.
I'm a big believer in soft plastic baits. Uh, I mean, a, a four inch watermelon red zoom finesse worm uh, is probably my go-to bait for smallmouth. Also little three and a half, uh, three inch or three and a half inch tubes. Uh, but basically anything that mimics a crawfish or a small bait fish uh, works pretty well usually. But I wasn't having the kind of luck that I typically have on those baits. It was really uh, pretty slow. But you know who was having some luck? And that was uh, Scotty Wyatt. Look how beautiful that thing is, man. Scotty fishes a lot on the Caddo River, and uh, he had a different kind of bait that he insisted on using, and it was uh, it was doing the job. And that is the uh, the Rapala Chad Rap number five. And uh, this thing, I mean, it just wore them out. I was catching so many on this bait and fishing it so hard, I mean, it was starting to tear up. I mean, I, I, I was missing a hook by the end of it on one of the treble hooks. It got trashed around pretty good on the rocks, and uh, but I just kept on using it, and, it, and I, I never lost it through the entire trip, and I, I still got it. I just need to put a new treble hook on it, and it's ready to go for the next trip. As we moved downstream, uh, one kind of funny thing that happened was a, a pair of dogs. These dogs followed us for miles and miles down the Caddo River, and it became kind of a joke. We were a little bit worried about the little one. He was, uh, he was kind of looking a little droopy and uh, overheated. We gave him some water, but uh, he wasn't, uh, wasn't real happy uh, after he had traveled several miles uh, on those four legs following us down the river. We were catching fish, uh, but a little bit disappointed in the quality of those smallmouth that we were catching. Just pretty much small fish. Of course, I'm not complaining. I mean, the smallmouth fight hard, so it was a lot of fun. But the Caddo River is known for producing some, some pretty big smallmouth bass, uh, and we just weren't finding those. But toward the end of the day, we did find a big fish. It just wasn't a smallmouth. And I'll give you one guess who caught it. So I was casting below this uh, this rock, a uh, little deeper pool of water, and uh, I was reeling my shad wrap in, and wham, it just hit. Instantly, I knew I had a, a nice fish. So I'm reeling it in, and, and here comes Mike. He's running in with his camera. Trey's got a camera, and I'm kind of panicking. You know, I don't want it to get off. I want him, you know, Mike's trying to get some good underwater pictures uh, of some fish, and, and luckily it stays on. It, it's, it's a good hook and he gets some really nice underwater pictures that, that made the calendar. Yeah! <laughs> it turned out to be a, a nice largemouth bass. Typically on the Caddo, you can catch some really nice smallmouth bass, um, but today they just weren't cooperating. Um, but I'll take that largemouth catch any day, and it, and it really just was a good ending to our uh, Caddo River float. Arkansas is, is blessed with thousands of miles of, of streams like the Caddo River. I mean, you know, just pull out an atlas or a map and find those crooked blue lines in the Ozarks and Washita's, and chances are there's some good fishing there. Uh, many outfitters uh, can, can rent canoes or you can take your own or a kayak, fishing kayak, but you know, get out there and enjoy this resource that's really unlike anything anywhere else. Arkansas Wildlife presents the Watch and Win Giveaway. During each episode of Arkansas Wildlife, we'll give away an Arkansas resident hunting and fishing license, a $35.50 value provided by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Visit the Arkansas Wildlife webpage at agfc.com slash Arkansas Wildlife TV and click on the Watch and Win icon to enter. This week's winner is Alan Arnold from Conway. Congratulations and thanks for watching. Arkansas Wildlife TV isn't the only way to learn more about outdoor recreation and conservation in the natural state. The award-winning Arkansas Wildlife Magazine can be delivered to your mailbox for just $12 a year. A subscription consists of six bi-monthly issues, including the popular Arkansas Wildlife Calendar. Get yours today.